Johnny Highland's in the house. All right, Johnny has been a great friend to us for many years. He was one of the first uh, big artists that I dared to call and say, hey, would you be involved with our little guitar family? And uh, he has been a gracious friend ever since then. And I knew if Paulette ever kicked me out of the house, I could show up at him and Kim. You come to my house, brother, anytime. <laughs> and at least, anytime. you know, spend the afternoon trying to call for a place. No, no, no. no. We'll, get, we'll get Kimmy to cook for you and everything. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, would you welcome country guitar legend Johnny Highland. Thank you all so much. Man, what an honor it is to be here this morning. Of course, you guys realize you woke a country boy up. <laughs> I'm actually on musician standard time, which is go to bed at four in the morning and up at the crack of noon. <laughs> no, actually, you know, I'm glad that Steve did this to me. I'm going to blame it on you too, but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give Steve the blame, but I'm also going to thank him because I have to get up next week to uh, go to the Summer Nam show where they're releasing my new beautiful Johnny Highland signature model with Kiesel guitars. And uh, back on a telly, guys. I'm yeah. loving it. I'm loving it. And uh, nice hats, by the way, Steve. I didn't even wear the cowboy hat. Dude. Hey, hey, I had to wear a guitar gathering hat, you know. You can thank Paula for the hats, too. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, they're beautiful, man. I'm proud to, proud to have one on the old noggin this morning. So, uh... Well, I'm so honored to be here, guys, and uh, of course, Mr. John Herring, my manager, is here with me this morning, so if you'd give John a round of applause for... Uh, you know, not only did you have to wake me up, but you had to wake him up, too, and he had to drive all the way in from Murphy's Park. Earlier. Yeah, early. Lots earlier. Yeah, lots earlier. So are you all having fun at the gathering? That's what I want to yeah, and you're learning. I, I'll tell you what, I am a fan of this man up here. He's one of my favorite players in Nashville. I love him. He's a good man. So I can tell you, you are learning from the best, that's for sure. You really are. And uh, all the way back in the legacy days and all yeah. the stuff, we've known each other a long time. And So anytime Steve calls, man, I, I knew we had a little bit of a, you know, didn't know if we were going to be on the road at this time, but... I kept telling John, I'm like, come on, man, if we're not there, we need to call Steve. And so I just love being here. I love you all for wanting to learn guitar and to become better at guitar. And, and uh, you know, this instrument has been at the forefront of my life since I was two and a half years old. I was born in a real small town of Woodland, Maine, uh, with an eye disease called nystagmus. And everybody kind of wondered what was going to happen to the little blind guy, you know? And so, really, by the grace of the good Lord above, he uh, had my aunt come bring in a 1939 J45 Gibson to our house that belonged to my dad's father. And I don't know why, man, but my dad never played it. He didn't know how to play an E chord. I mean, he had trouble playing the radio. Now, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He, dad was a great drummer back in the 60s, but he never played guitar. So, being very sentimental uh, to my dad, it kind of sat in his bedroom for a long while. But it had sat in my aunt's attic for years and years and years before Dad got it, and it was all beat up. But for some reason, I would sneak in Dad's bedroom and I'd pull that old Gibson out, and I was kind of like Linus with a security blanket. I'd just drag that thing everywhere. And my dad would tune it to an open E chord, and I kind of learned how to play with a guitar flat on my lap, walking the bass line, uh, and then, you know, using a, my thumb on the fifth fret for the four chord, and, of course, the seventh fret for the five chord. So I kind of learned my own kind of way of playing guitar, almost like what Jeff Healy would do, you know. But, uh, and I'm on talent shows doing that, believe it or not. It was pretty funny, really. Because I look back and go, man, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, man, you know. But, you know, cute kid in the cowboy hat with a bandana on, thinking I was Wyatt Earp. And, uh, you know, playing, playing for the Allman Brothers at five, you know. I don't know. That was kind of the attitude I had. And, uh, but really, guys, the, the guitar has always been my emotional outlet in life. It's always been with me, uh, and excuse my French, but it never bitches at me until I make it. <laughs> and that's why the beauty of guitar for me is there's never making mistakes. We all make mistakes, even in life, 
And what happens? You learn from your mistakes and it helps you grow, right? So when, when I make a mistake on guitar, I laugh so hard. I'm like, oh, now I know what to practice when I go home, right? So making mistakes is actually a good thing because it makes you realize, oh, I am human and I have to practice every single day. Yes. Steve can attest to that. You know, because we all, to stay on the top of our game, we have to practice. It's, it's just one of those things. You, Now, sure, we can take a, a week vacation and go off with the wife and do what we want to do. But at the same time, when we come back home, the first thing we do is grab the guitar and go, oh, I'm rusty, you know, and you got to practice harder. So, but we live in the best town here in Nashville to be able to follow a dream of the music business. But I'd love to kind of walk you through how I learned country guitar in the first place. And, uh, and just share some, some exercises and things that will help you if chicken picking guitar. Now, actually, Steve, I've got a dirt box on here, so. But actually, chicken picking guitar, the first thing you have to do is learn how to do the chicken. Right? right. So it's. <laughs> now, all I'm doing here, guys, is I'm on the 12th fret G string. It's important. And then I bend the B string on the 15th fret up. Like. There you go, Steve, you got it. Just in case I need that. Yeah. I might need that someday. Hey man, you, you won't believe this, guys, but the first time I ever played on the Grand Ole Opry, I, was, I did That's All Right Mama, and I scared to death, man. I looked down and my arm was shaking like this, and I just couldn't stop it. And I was thinking, my goodness, man, how do I stop this to play a solo? And so the first thing I did was start the solo off, and I put the chicken in the middle of it. And the whole crowd erupted. It was just amazing. So. But now I put truck horns and train horns and everything in my playing now because you have to have fun when you play guitar, right? Yeah. You know, the fact is, guys, if this was such an easy instrument, everybody in the world would play. That's right. But it's not easy, as you, uh, as you all are finding out in your own way. But then again, I mean, people say, well, Johnny, with a disability, man, does it make it harder for you? No, because really what the good Lord did in giving me the gift of music is it's never hard to practice. It's always fun. And I make it fun. And so, you know, everyone's seen uh, Despicable Me, the movie? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Minions had a, had a, a fart gun. <laughs> and that's, that's what I use in my house when a student comes over and they feel intimidated or they don't want to, you know, we need a way to break the ice. I'll hit a good old clunker note and be like, oh, you you know, let it go. And then they get to laugh, and then what happens? We start having fun in the lesson, right? Because fun is the biggest factor we have to keep in mind when playing any guitar at all. It doesn't matter what genre. But as I was a youngster growing up, my first love was Merle Haggard, George Jones, Webb Pierce, Farron Young. And then when I turned 10 years old and won Talent America, my dad took me to see Ricky Skaggs at the Bangor Auditorium. Now, I, did, I had no idea Ricky Skaggs played a beat bender. But the first thing I did was buy every record from him I could find and start learning the licks off the CD. So I would sit at home and, you know... So I learned all the steel bends without a, without a beat bender or even having access to a steel player to go, hey man, that sounds cool. So I think what Steve and I are going to do, you know, let's warm up with a little bit of blues stuff. Okay. Right. Because blues and country go real well together. And uh, I love the jump kind of blues. So what if we did a, what if we did like a...
and the dust off my eyes. It's all good. <laughs> so, you know, I have to say this too, guys. Right around the time I heard Ricky Skaggs, I also um, got really hip to... Uh, there was a show actually on TNN on the National Network called New Country. Yep. And they would mix, like, and well, actually Crossroads. And they would mix, like, blues guys with country people and that kind of stuff. So then I heard about Mr. Stevie Ray Vaughan and B.B. King and Albert King and Freddie King and Don King and... <laughs> <laughs> the wrong Freddie, man. I did it too soon. Dang, no? I ruined it. But anyway, it's... Uh, yeah, I love blues because it relates so much to country in that it's more pentatonic based. But yet with blues, you can be more free and more open with your, your emotion, if you will. I guess everything really in guitar is about emotion. You know, um, and, and of course I mentioned that earlier. Uh, for me, through my teen years of actually learning to play electric guitar based on loving Ricky Skaggs, uh, things started changing as I grew older. I started playing in a country band at 12. And uh, the funny thing is I learned all the top 40 country stuff and people say, well, how did you do, how did you learn that? Being legally blind. I'm like, well, I just bought the record and tried to learn it note for note as best I could and learn it in a way that I could play it with my, my expression, if you will, but learning you know, all the signature licks off the records and stuff that I needed. But really, I played in a three-piece band starting out, so I had to cover all the rhythms, all the fills, all the harmony vocals, and then all the leads. And so that was a lot on a 12-year-old kid that grew up playing bluegrass, you know. But people say, well, man, your chicken picking sound has like a, it has a lot of bluegrass in it. Well, yes, it does. And I'm actually going to show you something that's pretty cool that helped me way back when I was trying to, you know, when I was getting in that mode of mixing genres, if you will. So the most simple bluegrass lick is this one. Right? Now, you can hear that on any bluegrass record at all. That's one of the first licks guitar players learn when they play bluegrass. <clears throat> so all I'm really doing here is playing the A open. And then I'm hitting the second, minor third, and major third of the scale. And then I'm hitting the E to the F sharp. And I'm using a hammer on and a pull off there. And then hitting the A on the bottom. Now that lick was pretty fun, but what I realized was, oh wow, there's A's all over the fretboard. You know, so then I sat and was like, okay. So I can... simple way of looking at this. I'm keeping two fingers on the board at all times. There's an A. There's two A's. There's two A's. There's two A's. So my, my fingers are never leaving the fretboard, so to speak. And I'm always kind of creating an octave. But what it made me realize is I could take any lick that I learned, like that one, and I could virtually play it all over the fretboard. So that actually just kind of opened me up, like, wow, the fretboard is actually, That's right. it's huge. When you think about how many of the same lick you can play over and over again. Now. People say, yeah, man, I'm a block player. I don't believe in being a block player. We have a full entire fretboard to use. So as I started loving all these famous guitar players, I had to realize, man, I need to be more than just an pentatonic block player and, you know, playing in a block, you know. So it, oh, that kind of opened me up to realize that there were more than just one A on the fretboard and there was more than just a block for me to play in. Sure, you're scared to jump out of that block on either side, but you just have to take that step. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a blind guy take a wrong step. That's messy. <laughs> you know, back when I was a bigger man, the doctors would say to me, Son, you just fell down 22 stairs and you didn't break a bone. It's a good thing you're a fat man. <laughs> but that doesn't mean the old bones don't ache, though. You know. No, but it, it's really funny though, guys, because as scary as it is to be legally blind in life, 
It was equally as scary to say, if I'm going to be good on this instrument, I need to get past my fear. Yes. So really, there are some major points I'm trying to stress to y'all today. No matter where, what level you're at playing guitar, the first thing is you have to have fun. The second thing is overcome any fear. Don't be scared of the guitar. If, we, if you love this as much as I do, you're going to be passionate about it. You're going to say, man, I want to play all of this fretboard, not just some of it. And so it's like a painter, you know? It's like you, when you paint a picture, you want access to all of the colors. And if you don't have that, you learn how to mix the colors to create that color, right? So it's the same thing with guitar. When we're playing certain genres of music, it doesn't matter. It could be rock, blues, country. But the beautiful thing is, all of the notes are still the same, no matter what genre you play. So then, of course, you go on to your major scales and your pentatonic scales and learn your modes and all that stuff. But then I started realizing, wow, there's bends everywhere. So instead of me just practicing a major scale, you know, like everybody would... We learned that just this morning. Nice. About an hour ago. We well, now I'm going to show you a Johnny way to do it. It's <laughs> even freakier. What I did, though, to get good at bends, though, guys, is I took the major scale and said, and I learned the tonality of the scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, right? Mm -hmm. yep. But what I said was, if I can play that notated, then I should be able to bend into it. So I went. the Johnny Major scale, you just bend the notes. So no matter what note you're landing on, like if you start on A, you bend up to the second note. So, and there's a way to check your tone of that. So it's always nice when you can go back and check and make sure that you're hitting the proper note, right? And, and Johnny, you're bending on the lower strings, you're bending those yeah. actually toward the floor. Yes, yeah. bending down. People say, yeah, but when you do that, you reach to the second note. Exactly. You reach to the second note and know that you can bend that up. But where in relation, I look at it like this, guys. If the note is a whole tone, so A, B, C sharp, right? Well, there's a whole step to get to that third major, that the major third of that scale, right? So that means if I hit the second note, I have to bend up a whole tone. See? And then when I reach to the third note of the scale, which is the C sharp, where is the D in relation to that? It's just a half, a half tone. So that means I have to bend that C sharp into the half tone. And then of course you hear that country music all the time. Right? But see, that's how fun it is, guys. I mean, I, I remember practicing this stuff going, Hey, Dad, check it out, man. I just learned the intro to Summertime Blues. You know, so, but that's how much fun you can have with just practicing, right? Yeah. So, you know, guys, I could sit here and go through this massive chicken pick and spiel all day long. But what, you know, today for me is to give you a, a new way of looking at the fun factor in guitar. And Steve, I hope you don't mind me changing it up. Because really, guys, I'm 43 years old and I've played guitar since I was two and a half. People say, Johnny, you change up pedals like candy. Well, but I'm trying to find new sounds that inspire me, right? And so, and of course, when uh, I was with Music Man for seven years and they decided not to work with me, I moved to Kiesel. And so we built this beautiful Johnny Highland model. And uh, of course, this one is actually called the Solo. It has the normal Tele style knobs and switch. Uh, of course, they use strat knobs on this one, but essentially my knobs have just moved up a little bit and the switch is underneath. But uh, it'll be released next week. But when I changed guitars and went back to a T-style, then it was fun for me to experience, okay, I want to create the best tone with this guitar. So I use pedals for inspiration, I use sound effects and all that fun stuff for inspiration. But then again, as you're in the learning stages of guitar, you have to keep the fun going. 
And so today we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some exercises that will help. Has anyone in here ever heard of hybrid picking or are you trying hybrid picking? No. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, I like that. Well, as you can see, I've got a thumb pick on today. That's very new for me. And I actually started having some hand issues last year. <clears throat> Dropped my pick on the stage and my hand locked down and it hurt so bad. And I told my manager, I'm like, man, we're gonna have to cancel some road shows. And then I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna figure out another way to do this. So I threw the thumb pick on and realized, at least with the thumb pick on, I can't drop my pick. <laughs> and if my and if my hand locks, I can just throw it out there, right? Come on, get me, you know, and, and give it to Dickens on stage, you know? And so the thumb pick was like the answer to a prayer, but then I thought, oh Lord, I've got to learn how to do this. I've got to learn how to replay again. So talk about hard after playing with a flat pick all your life, right? So what I'm saying, guys, is all through life, you've got to make guitar fun. I had to do that with this within the last six months or so. So, and I'm not as proficient as I'd like to be yet, but I'm growing every single day just like you. Steve is growing every day just like you. We're all growing. Lord knows I don't want to grow anymore this way. I just want to grow this way. But anyway, I, I'm just so thankful to have an instrument that will talk when I want it to, and it loves it the more I practice. Why? Because your guitar always sounds better the more you play it, right? So, uh, you know, and I know I seem to get off course here a little bit, but, you know, in my teen years, those guys, I, you know, I loved Ricky Skaggs and I loved blues, but then, of course, in my mid-teen years, the rock stuff hit me. The Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Metallica, Rush, all that stuff. But why did that really impact me? If I love chicken picking and country guitar so much, how did that impact me? Well, it impacted me in the respect that if I got angry, that's the music I went to. So, just to give you an example, if Johnny Highland's happy, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear chicken picking. That's what you're going to hear. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Now, if I'm sad, what do you think about a play? <laughs> well, <laughs> you funny guy. <laughs> but, you know, some people would say, well, you, of course, you're a country player, so you play a country ballad. You know, you play some, like, somber steel guitar, you know.
Well, but then, guys, when I was 16 years old was the first time the cops showed up. Because when Johnny got told I could never drive a car, now you can imagine how that would make a person feel when you can never, when you get told you can never get yourself around unless you rely on someone else, right? How that really hit me hard, you know? Because I love my dad's old 78 Ford Super Cab that I would drive anyway. I'm only telling you guys that, right? <laughs> And uh, that's actually when I learned how to, right? Toyota. But I actually went to the woodshed that day with a an old 64 custom 410 amp and a DOD master metal pedal with an Ibanez guitar with sharp tooth in like, man, I would thought I was the coolest dude ever. Curly Q chord. And this is what I played. I played stuff like this. So, all of a sudden... We're coming to take you away! But I, you can imagine how loud that was in our woodshed. It was awful, man, I'll tell you. But here again, I love playing heavy metal. I've jumped on stage with the G3 tour of, you know, twin Steve Vai on stage before. And, but hybrid, the hybrid style really helped me with that, guys. So anyway, you can see how emotionally all these different genres help me stay the guy that I am, right? So music has become, guitar has become more than just a oh, I'm a chicken picker, and this is what I do, and this is what I'm going to become. No, guitar actually, you know, as I learned over the years, as I was growing better and better through the years, I realized that, man, this is what the good Lord has given me to do. And so after three years at the University of Southern Maine and graduating third, uh, first honor essay, a third of my class, I uh, told my parents that I was leaving and moving to Nashville. And that didn't settle too well. <laughs> But that's okay. I've been here 22 years now, and every dream that I've ever had has yes. already come true, yes. with the exception of being on the front cover of Guitar Player Magazine. But then I realized they're not going to put an ugly country boy on the front cover. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> so it's all good, you know? But actually, you know, folks, I've been so blessed in my career and so thankful for everything that's gone on. You know, I've headlined the Grand Ole Opry three times. I've played on stage with Vi and Satriani and Ingve and Neil Sean and and uh, jam with Sammy Hagar, and all of my heroes in life I've pretty much met. And even got to play with Les Paul three times at the Iridium Jazz Club. And, wow. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. So, but then I signed my first record deal with Steve Vai and put out my first album. And then it was so weird, guys, because I was on the road and doing the rock stuff with G3, and I even went on the road with George Clinton and P-Funk. <laughs> That was pretty awesome, though, man. I just sat there. All night long, it was great. I got the finger tap and knew all that fun, crazy, whammy bar stuff. And I just had a ball. And uh, so George calls me up in front of 120,000 people in South Carolina. While Little Feet was on one stage and Rod Stewart was on another, we were on the big middle stage. And he pulls me out in front of the whole crowd with just Madonna's drummer, and he said, Boy, I want to hear some of that chicken funk. <laughs> so what do you think I did? <laughs> hey, man, it's just me, right? But, you know, honestly, guys, I was out doing that stuff on the road, but then I'd fly into Nashville, and I'd play on a Toby Keith record, or Janie Fricky, Lynn Anderson, won a Grammy with Ricky Skaggs. You know, I've, I've played on so many wonderful records and had such a blessed career, but why did all of that happen? Yes, blessings from the good Lord above, and the uh, stick to itness, I guess, is the best way to put it. Just staying true to yourself and playing as much as you can in town, but, but really, guys, it's practice, practice, practice. That's what it boils right down to. So what I'd like to do right now is, yes, okay, you've heard I can play many different genres, and I have a lot of fun with that. But now I'm here to help you. And I know someone had asked me before the class started to talk about my high, low, low, high pattern. 
I'll be glad to do that. Yeah. And Steve, if I start going over, buddy, you let me know. No, that's all right. I, that that sounds great. And I would I would like to have for, do a request that you would do your uh, steel bend. Uh, oh, of course. I'd uh, love to do uh, that. Hybrid picking exercise, a scale exercise. Yes. So oh, I'd be glad to. Man. Well, I, you know, I do want to take the last, you know, 10 minutes or so and open up the floor for people to ask questions. But let me just give you some wonderful, fun exercises. Of course, the first one we did was that major scale where you use the bends, right? That's really a lot of fun. And, uh, but how did I learn how to hybrid pick? Well, when I was 10 years old, I won Talent America, but I played guitar, banjo, mandolin, and fiddle in my show at that time. So playing five-string banjo, I already had kind of an understanding of using the thumb in these two fingers. And so, but then again, I really didn't like the thumb pick. I didn't really, you know, I kind of put the banjo down until I needed it when I started in the country band. And uh, so really, you know, the thumb pick went away and I really enjoyed the flat pick for that kind of thing. So I held the flat pick like a normal flat pick, but then I decided to use these two fingers, uh, the middle and ring finger. And I thought, how can I get the middle and ring finger to be equally as good as my picking, you know, my thumb and forefinger? So what I did is I came up with a, oh, we don't need dirt, no. We <laughs> there we go. So what I did was I came up with this hammer-on exercise where I would just go from the fourth to the fifth fret, and I wanted to work both hands too. I wanted to keep training my hands both ways because on top of just getting good with the right hand, you have to make it work in conjunction or in unison with the left hand. So this little exercise really helped with that, with finger strength on this side and then the hybrid style getting good on the right hand. So it helps both. So we're going to start on the fourth fret, low E string, and we're just going to hammer on to the fifth fret. And we're doing that with our pick. And then what we're going to do is go to the A string, but we're going to use our middle finger now and pull up on the A. You can grab your guitars if you want to try and play yeah, along with this. Yeah, if you guys need it. Yeah. There you go. So on your very low string, just go from the fourth to the fifth fret. And then on the A string, pull with your middle finger. So you're pulling, yeah. Yep. So two, two, two different things. You're picking on one string, pulling up on the other. And then when you go to the D string, you're going to go back to the flat. And then on the G string, you're going to pull again with your middle finger. Then on the B string, we have the pick again. And then a pull on the high E string. And then what I do is when I come back down, I just go with the flat pick. So that way you go down, up, down, up with your flat pick. Now, the trick to this whole exercise, guys, is we're going to use each finger set. So we've done one and two, so then the next move we're going to do is one and three. And then we'll use one and four, two and four, and three and four. So I think Steve can help me kind of exercise this out for you. So now that we've done the first and second finger, now we're going to go one and three. so far? Yeah. So now we're going to do one and four. And then back down again. Now the fun begins because we switch to two and four. which is the, oh my goodness, Now I 
was so disciplined as a kid that if I hit a clunk note, which I just did, I had to start all over again. And then what I would do, guys, to get better at this is I would practice it to where I was comfortable, and then I would set a metronome really slow and then slowly build and increase the, the timing of the metronome so that I could keep practicing that way. And, over, and then after you do the whole scale with the pick and the middle finger, then you do that whole exercise again with the pick and the ring finger. And so what that does is it builds the strength in your middle finger, ring finger with the pick, and then it strengthens all of your fingers on the left hand. I've got a question for you, Chad. Sure. Yeah. On, the, on the picking, it seems like, how did it change from using the flat pick to the thumb pick with some of this hybrid picking stuff that you're, that you're talking about? Well, you know, Steve, that's a great question, man. I'm, I actually had to talk to Tom Bresch, who is Pearl Travis's yeah, boy yeah. legend here in this town, uh, about I, would, I had some issues with this index finger. So I started using the thumb pick without this finger, <coughs> which to some thumb pictures would be like, oh, that's just wrong, because you need to use the index. And essentially, you're just doing what I did with the flat peg. So he's and just curling up underneath here like that. Oh. Yeah, well, I asked Bresh, I said, is that okay? And he said, it worked for Jerry Reed. Yeah. Because I guess Jerry Reed had arthritis in his index finger. So he, he wrote Famous Moses and all those great songs by using the thumb pick in the middle of the frame, just like I did. So Tom Bresh made me feel a lot better with that. He really did. <laughs> but yes, I really don't use the index finger when I use a thumb pick. And, Maybe that's why I'm so clunky at it still, you know? But I'm getting better at it. It's getting smoother. Now, guys, I will say, too, make sure that every note you play is as clean as possible. We don't want to waste notes on a guitar. They're too beautiful. Johnny, take us through that exercise. Just kind of to kind of play it in, play it at the speed. Yeah, a little bit faster as, you would, as you're normally warming up. So if I'm warming up, you'll hear me go... exercise and it's really really good for all of the finger strength on each side so yeah. beautiful yeah that's a great little great little scale to play or a little exercise to do now of course guys I was to that one I do the traditional you know all four fingers but now some people would say well do you actually alternate pick and finger yeah if you want to you can Down to the to the A flat, then you just slide up. But hear how every note is as clean as possible. Yeah. Now what I'm doing though, guys, that's different from any way everyone would learn that is I'm using pick finger pick finger. So pick pull pick pull pick pull the whole time. I have a question. Sure. So so in your right hand. Okay. Um, I'm so busy with the left hand. No, 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 that's okay. Um, actually, I'm just going, so like on the F note, I'm picking, but I'm pulling with the middle finger on the F sharp, then the G gets a pick, A flat gets a, a pull. So it's pick, pull, pick, pull, pick, pull. But see, you only have four fingers, so pick, pull, pick, pull. And then on the next string, it's pick, pull, pick, pull. So I'm just kind of going down each string that way. Now, coming back, like when we move up to A, well, I'm going still the same way. Though. I'm going pick, pull, pick, pull, pick, pull, pick, pull. And then once you get down to F sharp, you just slide up to G. Don't you 
you're going to start all over. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. It's, so I'm just starting on the F note. So six string. Yep, six string F, and I'm just going. I'm just chromatically walking up. So F, F sharp, G, G sharp, right? But what I'm doing is I'm pick, pull, pick, pull. Then we go to the A string, same thing. Pick, pull, pick, pull. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's no flat picking on this full scale. It's all pick finger, pick finger. So pick, pull, pick, pull, pick, pull. And Johnny, talk for a second. Uh, pulling on the string is pretty brutal on, on normal nails. Oh, yes. So uh, talk us. Talk well, us you know, guys, when I moved to Nashville, I actually started, I saw guys in Nashville that would put blue on the tips of their fingers. I guess Chet used to do that. And then some guys would actually put press-ons on. That's back during the, you know, Lee press on nail days, right? So I bought some. You ever seen a blind guy try to glue his own nail? <laughs> Lord have mercy. So, but I would go to the gig, and, I, and actually, guys, I'll share this funny story with you quickly. When I was actually with Fender, they invited me to play the Fender booth at NAMM, and I drew this huge crowd, and right in front of me was George Clinton, Bootsy Collins, James Burton, and Marty Stewart. All, and Leroy Parnell, all standing right in front of me, who are all legends and heroes of mine. And so I'm trying to pick my butt off and do the best job I can, and all of a sudden, I'm playing, they, they handed me like a 52 reissue, you know, with the ashtray style bridge. So my lead press on nail pops off and goes and sticks down in the, the hole where the bridge pickup is and causes a sitar sound every time I hit the high E. <laughs> And I'm just going, oh man, this is horrible. They're not going to like me now. But no, it worked out great. And it was funny because everybody laughed. Because this, the, the, literally, I used the nail so long at that time. Because I was just getting good at it. But then it was funny because a dear friend of mine came up to me and he said, Highland, have you ever tried acrylics? And I said, oh no, not another thing i got to paint on. He goes, no man, you go to the salon. I said, go to the salon. And he's like, yeah, dude, you got to go get them, get them painted on. But he goes, that way, dude, if you hit them with a hammer, they won't break. You can... I'm like, blind guys don't use hammers much. <laughs> but anyway, you can, you can print these things, you know, and they will not break. I've, I've only broken two acrylic nails in about 17 years. So that's how rugged these things are. But I can tell you what, man, I know every lady that goes into that shop on a first name basis, and I know when their husbands go fishing and where they go. <laughs> and you, you only have it on the, the middle of the middle ring, finger. ring finger. And I keep them about... And they're pretty long. Well, yeah, they're about a quarter of an inch. That's enough to gouge my eyes out. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to pick your nose with them either. <laughs> I think I touched my brain once. <laughs> Alright, enough silliness for me. <laughs> pull-offs, you know, it's funny, man. Pull-offs are actually quite fun in the respect that they're kind of easy to do. I like hammer-ons and then pull-offs because I can, I can actually... Now, when I practice them, what am I doing? I'm pulling with the finger. So if I do like a... The thing is with a pull-off, you want to make sure that you hear the second note. So... So you want to pull the string off with a little bit of attitude, a little bit of... So you can hear the note behind it. Or you can get a really nice compressor and allow it to do the job for you. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of gear, um, kind of talk us through some of the key parts of your board there, because I know folks have been guarding. Yeah, man, actually, actually this know. board is simple. It's uh, All it really consists of is a tuner, compressor, three dirt pedals of three different levels of dirt, um, delay, reverb, and a noise reducer. So it's actually pretty simple. There's no, like, you know, fire truck sounds or anything, you know, fun like that. Um, this is kind of my standard go-to board, though, when I do a Johnny Highland show now. It's pretty, pretty standard and gives me the standard tones that I need. 
Uh, but I've actually just teamed up with Robert Keeley, man, and I love his new Compressor Plus. It's really great. So I'm using a GoGo -Go Horizon Tuner, which is, I call that blind man friendly. I love it. And uh, then I'm using the Compressor Plus. Then I'm going into the Keeley Red Dirt for light overdrive, so I can get kind of a, you know, just a... Uh, And then, of course, I'm using the uh, Analog Alien Bucket Seat. This is kind of my middle of the, spe the uh, drive spectrum. It's got a really great voice. Nice. Yeah, it's got a great sound. by metal pedals for my for my real heavy stuff. Same technique she's doing it on acoustic. The same technique used on electric, and you get the, the whole uh, you know Van Halen sort of uh, yes. tapping sound that's yep. happening. So it's the same. But same you know, thing. it's fun when you have the tone that you need. Yeah. And I found with the thumb pick guys, it's even more fun because before I'd have to tuck the flat pick underneath and tap. But then people say, well, how do you tap with the big gigantic nails? Well, I really don't. I use the forefinger, yeah. you know, for that. But now with the with the thumb pick on, I can open my hand up and tap. So it's you know if I do like so I can do like that like all that Eddie, the old Eddie stuff, you know. So that's kind of what I'm working on today, is having fun with that stuff, so. But, uh, so guys, here's the other thing too. I want you to realize, outside of the major scale that you learned this morning, one of the things that makes a great player all around is chromaticisms. And, of course, if you just look at the, if you look at the fretboard for what it is, and you just take your low sixth string, right? Well, yes, you can play, you can play. Right? You can play your major scale just going horizontally on one string. But if you look at all the notes in between, that's like a full on using every chromatic you have available, right? So I gotta find out which pedal is still on here. There we go. But what I'm prone to find is that when I'm either playing blues or rock or even country, I love using chromaticisms in that they give you what I call a vocalization. So one of the things I want to stress today to you guys is, uh, in talking about chromatics, um, the most important, see when I was a kid, the most important thing was I have to learn every lick I can learn, right? And of course people in Nashville would say, wow kid, I, you're so great, but I can't wait to hear you when you're 40. And that used to make me so angry, I'd be like, what in the world, man? I'm practicing in the woodshed all the time, and, you know? Uh, having all these wonderful accolades and, and the experienced guitar players are going, kid, I can't wait to hear you when you're 40. And now I'm 43 and I'm like, ding, I get it. What it is, guys, is the emphasis of what you put the most emphasis on in your playing uh, changes. And I think Steve can, can back me up on this. When you're young, it's all about licks and scales and how fast can I play and 90 knots and no smoke and 
But really, the most important thing to any music at all is the melody. The melody to a song is the key. And so, you can take the simplest song and, and uh, turn it into something wonderful by using chromaticisms. And the reason I use the word chromaticism is the fact that it vocalizes the major scale. It adds nuances. Like, I can't sit here and talk to you all day like this. It would drive you crazy and you'd leave the room in about 14 seconds. Right? I don't, we don't talk monotone. And even if we move the scale, the scale is a scale, but there's all these wonderful nuances in between, which are the chromatic notes, right? But I want to have fun with you for just a second and have Steve humble me, if you will. I want to do something that was very surprising to a student recently for me as a teacher. He was saying, Mr. Highland, how do you make, how do you create a solo? And I said, let's just take a very simple song, that's a beautiful song, simple, and let's just learn the melody. So we took You Are My Sunshine in A. how to do it using double stops. <clears throat> what are double stops? They're just two notes played simultaneously, right? So then I said, let's go. important thing to that song, right? Because without that melody, we have nothing to put licks around. We have nothing to make, you know, we're using the scale to create that melody. So when I look at a song now, I think, I need to learn the melody on guitar first. And why? Because that's where the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do comes in. They create that melody based on that scale most of the time. Could be a minor, could be whatever, you know, but most of the time, the melody is very simple, and it comes from that major scale. So then, as a lead guitar player, I say, okay, well, wait a minute. I, I need to know where I can put something, right? So, and we don't want to step on that melody. So, Steve, let's, uh, let's, let's swing this. to it now, right? But now, I want to point something out to you. Steve and I play this one more time. Here we go. Hold. 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 Oh, there's a hole there. There's another hole. Hold. And there's a hole at the end. So what we do is I take these little holes around the melody, and then we can chromaticize and move around the scale a little bit. So let me show you how we're going to do that. And then we're going to turn this into something really cool, right? So, one, two, and three.
talk to you about the high to low high pattern uh, you know when I meet you know hopefully I can meet you guys you can pick up a CD if you like we got some merch here today but but uh, I'm more than glad to help any of you with the high to low high pattern and we actually have johnnyhighlandlessons.com so if you're ever back in the Nashville area or you live here and you'd like to take a lesson with me or get this we're doing a Johnny Highland lesson tour this year <laughs> so we're actually going city to city actually with me private teaching as well so if you have any interest in that, I'm more than glad to help you out with any part of your playing. The most important thing for me today I wanted to get across to you was number one, have fun when you play. Number two, just overcome your fear and love the guitar for what it is, for it's an entirety, right? Number three, melody is the most important thing, okay? So do we have any questions at all before we have to get done? Yes. I just want to make sure, uh, so you, you find the melody, you move it around the neck, then you create holes, and with those holes where you can take the chromatic scale and put that in there? Exactly, but what happens though is the melody has its own holes. What you're doing is just spotting out where they are, and then you can say, oh, I can put a little lick right in there. But see, it's not the, the complication of the lick itself, it's does it fit around the melody properly. So what I've grown to find is music becomes more beautiful when you realize that versus how fast and how awesome is this lick I'm going to stick in. You know. So thank you for your question. Anybody else? Oh, absolutely. Let's take one of my sunshine blues it too. Yeah, let's do that. Here you go. system in this guitar is quite unique to me and what I love. But the bridge pickup gives me that kind of chicken picking back pickup sound. You know? And if I go to the second position, it gives me that kind of Albert Lee, Steve Warner. Oh, it's a five-way. So yeah. it's not a standard Telecaster no. three. 
But here's the cool thing about it, though, Steve. I wanted to keep the trueness to the three-way of a telly. So when you go to the third position, it's the middle position of a telly. So you have a... So just the middle pickup by itself. So I can and then of course on the, the neck pickup, it kind of gives me that bluesy rounder. So I use the neck pickup mostly for my blues stuff or the fourth position, which is just the middle pickup. And when I play chicken picking, I go back to the bridge. So yeah, they all have a place in in the genres that I love to play. So yeah, thank you for your question. Wow. One more question. One more question. Uh, yes. Maybe you describe the uniqueness of this, your new signature guitar, which makes it unique. Oh, absolutely, my friend. I'd be glad to. And in fact, guys, I am so, so proud to be teamed up with the, the Kiesel family. They are such wonderful people. And they, you know, when, when the Kiesel name came back to the brand, if you will, uh, Jeff Kiesel has made this company just over the top with greatness as far as how they the build quality just went up exponentially. It was incredible. I'm not saying that carving guitars weren't great, because they were. Um, but to be honest with you, what we did is I wanted to create uh, a very fun, uh, user-friendly T-style guitar, but with modern a modern take on it. So what we did is we have a T-style body here, yes, but we used my Johnny Highland six-shooter single pickups from Electric City Pickups, which are Strat-styled, so they're Strat-sized. Now, we tried ashtray bridges, we tried stuff, you know, like the old Fender way with the bigger telly size bridge pickup, but it just, it didn't suit me well. I really wanted to have the freedom and the openness around here, if you will. And I also wanted to do that in case someone wanted a trim version of this guitar, they could buy that as well. Um, so, of course, with this being strat size pickup, we have a base plate on this bridge pickup to keep that chicken pick and span, you know, telly sound. Of course, my switching, as I just showed you, was different. Um, and of course, on my Johnny model, uh, when it comes out, the knobs, as I said, will be up closer. Because I've got steak fries for fingers, so I can't reach the volume knob real well, or the tone knob is impossible. And it was that way on a, on a fender as well. It was really hard for me to reach. So Jeff was the first guy to say, buddy, we'll put the knobs exactly where you want them. So, um, so, I, you know, I'm just so impressed by that, but this is a very lightweight slump ash body, and it's got a very, very light uh, coloring done to it. There's no lacquer on this wood. It's, it's actually called the Kiesel Raw Tone Finish, and this color is called Scarlet, but as you guys can see when we're done here, you can feel all the grain in this wood. There's not much color or paint or lacquer or anything on this guitar. The other thing that's really cool is if you look at the back side, look at this heel. It gives you perfect access up the fretboard to where if you oh, want to fly nice. and do all that finger tapping stuff, you can. Now on a Fender style, it's a big block back here with a metal plate with four bolts, and it's just really hard to get access up the fretboard farther. So we really, you know, spent some time with that. Um, easier access to your controls because of the control plate on the back. And then, of course, this is a 22 fret maple neck, bird's eye maple, with a color treatment on this one, but my Johnny model, when it comes out, won't be this color treated. I just like the regular bird's eye maple. I tried this for a while, and I love it, obviously. This is the, this is the number one prototype, so. Um, but to be honest, I love the big black diamond inlay, and we have all stainless steel frets in here. So, uh, which really make it to where, you, you know, like with nickel frets, I wear them out as much as I bent, you know. And, uh, but then, of course, Kiesel lock and tuners, uh, a headstock that is six in line, but very unique to the Kiesel family, which I love. Um, but what makes this guitar so special is there's a dual action truss rod in here, but on each side of that truss rod are two carbon fiber rods that keep this neck as stable as humanly possible. I mean, it's just incredible. I have played this guitar, since I, since I got this guitar back last October, November, it's never had a setup. The neck has not budged. And I mean, I went to True Fire in Florida and did a True Fire video in 80 degree weather, came back to Nashville when it was 30 degrees, went to Virginia where it was 15 degrees, up. and then of course we traveled doing road stuff, and I've never had to have this neck adjusted. It was incredible. 
So, but the base price is going to start at fifteen ninety nine, guys, for a USA custom built guitar. I, I'm just so proud of the pricing because uh, Kiesel guitars sell direct. So KieselGuitars.com, or you can call eight five eight guitars. But they they want no middleman, no music stores that can up the up the price of the guitars. So the price that they give you is really uh, is the best in the world. There's no better that can beat the Kiesel family on pricing. So I'm just so proud to be with them and uh, hope to see you guys at the NAMM show next week. But in the meantime, Steve Krebs, thank you for having me do this oh, today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we got time for one more little song. What do you want to hear? Blues, rock, country, what do you want to hear? Country. Country, let's do it. Can I throw some chickens in there? Yes. <laughs>